you've got a curriculum and sometimes I don't agree with the curriculum yeah. at certain points. The way they set out that they want us to do tasks and to be honest, I don't follow that because mm. sometimes I know it's not in the best interest of my students. Yeah. Even the way sometimes I feel the curriculum is laid out, I don't go according mm. to that. I might go and do a module that's at the end and then bring it up to the module in the beginning okay. because I feel they work better from my experience. So you, so one of the qualities of being a good lecturer in a TVET college is, is that you take control of the actual uh, selection, sequencing and pacing of the curriculum. You're following it, but within your own professional judgment, at certain points you say, uh-uh, this doesn't make sense to do it now, I want to do it here. And this activity doesn't make sense doing it like this, I'm going to do it like that. I feel like certain modules work better together or in a different sequence because they support one another better. Yeah. It, it builds on understanding and uh, learning for the students. Okay. Okay, so now let's, let's take it from that that's a very broad start, right? We're going to go into a lot more detail because we've really got to kind of like, kind of interrogate this. Um, but one of the senses I've got when I've talked to you guys and other people is that being a good lecturer is actually slightly different when you're teaching the NCV on the one side and the NATED on the other. It's almost like they expect two different kinds of lectures, although if you're good, you can be one to both. What are the two kinds of lecturers which are expected within the NCV and the NATED programs? Uh, with, with me personally, I've thought, I think half of my teaching experience has been NATED mm. and I've gone into the NCV program. Uh, with the NATED, you've just got a curriculum and you've got to teach it. Mm. Uh, it's, it's changed a bit because when NATED was created, uh, Report 191, mm. All our students that came in came in from industry. They yeah. they had that practical know-how. They knew what we we're talking about. I spoke about a transformer. In their mind, they knew what it was because they had that industry experience. Okay. But now we're getting students straight out of school who have none of that. Uh, so, so it's and and you also look at the time frame that you have for report one nine one. Like over the years, in my last years when we were teaching. The, the amount of time we had for teaching this got shorter and shorter and shorter. Like I know people used to say back then you had about 10 weeks to 12 weeks to teach the curriculum. Oh uh, yeah? And then now we've got about 8 weeks. So uh, how come? Uh, um, the, way, the way the layout's been done, the way the timetable has been set for exams to start for some. Also with strikes, with the, with the, with uh, the strike action. Okay. Okay. Uh, also we had used to have problems with the re um, releasing of results. Yeah. Like, I know sometimes the, the timetable would say you would get results on this day. But we have had instances where results took one week, two weeks, sometimes three weeks to arrive. Yeah. So that delayed the whole process. Uh, we did make contingency plans. We said we'll put you all temporarily ahead, start teaching. Mm -hmm. But that opened up our own can of worms, another can of worms. Because then when we told students you didn't pass, you had to go back yeah. and they refused. But also on that, yeah. all it shows was we, lecturers adapted to the new kind of student. Yeah. We basically got them to learn to pass. So, and, and so the NCV lecturer is the guy that's teaching them to pass. That's, a, that's what a good lecturer is. No, with, well, with the report, report, report 191, yeah. with the way the curriculum is set, uh, set out, you've got so much to learn, and you've got two tests to write for your ICAS mark, okay. and then you write a final exam. Okay. But it's only the theory. Um, it's only these set of questions. And yeah. also, if you go back and you look, okay, recently they have been making changes, changing examiners, mm -hmm. the way they ask questions. But for a good number of years, it was the same question yeah. over and over and over. So basically, if I was testing this module, basically I had five types of questions. Mm. Me as a lecturer would ensure my student knows all five questions yeah. and what the answers could be. Okay. And then students with this kind of exam just have to memorize. Mm. Because we've had cases where students, like I've seen it, they come from the lower levels, brilliant marks. Yeah. And with those marks you would justify when I took them at the higher level and I asked them a basic question. They didn't know. If it wasn't in the, if it wasn't what they'd learned of by heart. Yeah. But what they'd learned of by heart, did they understand it? Uh, no. You're learning, you're learning to pass. Rote learning. Yeah. No. You're learning to 
Okay, so now we're going to get into that because I think that's going to talk to the different ways that students are engaging with the um, curriculum and different way lecturers are actually teaching the curriculum. Um, yeah, because even as myself as a lecturer, you could see you've got a module that has five subsections. Mm. But you could see over the last five years, an examiner is only testing a two section. Yeah. And we've seen lecturers only teach two then sections that teach, come out. You teach the you, two. You teach the two because it's a, yeah. because also of the time frame. You've got limited time yeah. to teach, so they try to get the student prepared as much. Mm. You need to get the pass rate up because yeah. management wants to see your pass rate. Yeah. So the trick is focus on less, do it, do they do it well and get them to pass or do it so that they learn it off by heart to pass. Mm. But also uh, put the pressure lecturers are under, you can do it well, get them to learn, get them to understand and a student will understand because he knows the theory, he knows the work, yeah. but he could fail the final. And all that shows on you is, many people say, no, your pass rate is too bad. Yeah. But they're not looking at what the students are learning. So that's also adjusted the way lecturers think. Just get them to pass. So the, so the consequence is, if you try to be a good lecturer in terms of like saying, I've got to get these guys to learn these skills and I've got to make sure that they actually do these things properly, then what happens is, or learn these things properly, what happens is it comes to an exam that isn't what comes up in the exam because you've been trying to teach them how to do the whole thing. Mm. Student fails or does very badly. You as a lecturer trying to do your job land up not looking really good with the... Um, because at the end of the day, nowadays you are assessed on your pass rate. Yeah. So it comes down to competency. Are we teaching competency or are we teaching students to just pass an exam? Now, what do you understand about competency? What is it? What is it? What is it to be? Is it is it to be competent, or what's like? What's this word, competency? Competent. If a student is competent in what he's able to do, then he's acquired a skill, and then you are progressively training him to be prepared to go up for a trade test, an evaluation at that level, so that he can be deemed able to carry out certain functions at work wherever he's employed. So his employability depends on his competency, not necessarily on his pass mark. Okay, but now that competency, is that competency, for example, is it, a, is it quite a low level competency? In other words, is it that you can do a certain task with a certain set of skills and show that you can do the, the task properly? Or is it a situation where you're given quite a complex set of things to do where you've got to problem solve and work out context, work out situations, come up with what needs to be done in a slightly ambiguous space and work out how to do, is that what it is to be competent? Or is competent, you get given one set, of, one task to do with a couple of skills attached and as long as they can do those couple of things, you're competent. It, it depends, there's two, there's two aspects to that. Compet uh, competency on that level that you're speaking about, complex levels of, uh, yeah. of uh, working out different dynamics related to a task, doesn't just happen, just, you don't just go there. Yeah. You will start with small le levels of complexity. Mm. And as a student is able to engage with those levels, then we come in with this aspect of scaffolding. To, to get you to come to that level of complexity, we have to scaffold you to that place. And as you develop an understanding of the concepts, you are able to go to higher levels and higher levels. Because when you're standing before a machine which is highly automated, yeah. you cannot just go there and be able to carry out the repairs and fall find on that machine mm. if your levels of competency hasn't been gradually scaffolded to that yeah. point. And an and artisan must be able to do that, a competent artisan. But now, what you're saying is that type of competency where you're starting to say you've got to start with like some very basic skills. Then what happens is the skills build up a little bit. And then once they've built up to a certain point, they start to be able to problem solve and think their way through what the workplace actually demands. That's not what's going down in the TVET college. If you're talking about this situation where you're trying to get through the curriculum. One and one doesn't do that at all. It doesn't address those aspects of it because you can get a student who has finished at N6 level, 
who still doesn't know how to use a multimeter because he's never had a multimeter in his hand and yet he's done so many years of study. But isn't he going into a workshop and working with the tools at some point? Nothing. Uh, Robot 191 Nothing. has no interaction with tools mm. and workshops. Nothing. They are only there for theoretical knowledge. Is it that's why I say that was, that's the mm. mistake but we've made because mm. remember Robot 191 was initially for students coming from industry. Exactly. And we haven't changed that. So mm. we are now getting students from schools mm. and they haven't got that background. So we haven't, the curriculum hasn't catered for that. So we just, lecturers have catered for it. Mm. So, so, we, so they actually don't know what it is, what it is that they're actually doing. They've got no actual experience of the thing which they're actually supposed to be working on. 